production was pretty much the pinnacle of run and gun filmmaking. We were running back and forth between sets and uh, locations. Uh, we shot it primarily at Dylan's place, which was an interesting experience in, it, in and of itself. I never filmed any driving scenes before, uh, not with dialogue at least. So we actually ended up a year, about a year and a half before we ended up filming, uh, we ended up doing some test shooting. Well, test shooting is the time when you kind of work out all the kinks before you officially go out there and film a scene. Just getting a sense of how everything might play out, getting an understanding of, uh, oh, in this environment, I've got to do this to get the best audio. Oh, I can do this to get the best shot. It's just, it's like a practice round before you actually commit something. So what we're doing is we're gonna set up a uh, sort of a makeshift car crash. Uh, now there's several different methods you can do this. Um, and uh, wow, it is blazingly hot up here. So, but um, yeah, we got, we got the shot list. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna set the camera up, my camera up back here, and we're gonna be sitting up front looking that way. And then, we're gonna, and then later we're gonna shoot another car pretending to crash into us. Well, Tom came out to my house and we were gonna initially film the conversation in the car between Jason and Michael, and then we were gonna just film the initial crash. Nothing after that, just the initial crash. What we're doing here is because I happened to lost some of the pipes for this green screen behind the cabinet where I store it, we have to use these two pieces of lumber from my dad's trailer to prop up the green screen. So, a uh, filmmaker's tip. If you have a homemade green screen like this, at least, at least, if you're worried about storage, at least glue the cufflinks and wherever these are attached together. You don't have to glue the entire frame together, just the stuff so you don't lose it. Maybe I'll hammer it in a bit, um, like a rubber mallet. I'll go, there's one in the garage. However, it was windy that day. Very windy. So the green screen frame kept falling over. Just this huge gust of wind would come by when we were ready to film and it would blow over. This is why you don't lose the lake pieces to your green screen frame. It was uh, it was not a pretty sight. It was not pretty. I have to pull up closer, so. Or, or you know what would that, what would be... Uh, it just fell over. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> so we took it off the leg pieces and just brought it forward and had the sheet kind of drape over. Best, but this is just kind of a test, so even if the keying was not very good, it's not gonna be in the final film, so. So watching the playback now, as you can see, show that right there. It doesn't quite cover up my end, but it works, so. And when we actually shoot it for real, whoever's DPing, it'll, the camera will be shakier, so. And everything, so people won't notice it. Go. Go. And how we shot the, uh, the oncoming car, oh, we did this the same way that we did during the test shooting. We had uh, we shot it in reverse. Now, normally when you reverse a clip, you can tell that it's being reversed, but you can get away with that if you're doing a lot of quick cuts. So Tom gets in the car and drives backwards, swerving to kind of get that uh, drunken aspect into it. And then he would reverse it and play it forward like the car's coming at us. One of the best takes that we did, it, it didn't, and this was just testing shots, so it wasn't gonna be used. But one of the funniest takes we did that day was Tom was going backwards and he did a particular swerve and uh, I actually ended up going in a ditch. All right, here we go. We were imagining that moving forward how the drunken driver just goes into the gyps and then pops right out and hits us. That took a few takes. Same day as the test shooting. So we came back, we brought a reflector to help, you know, bounce the sun back at us. And it was, even though we lucked out when we shot it for real, it was completely overcast. But it came out looking really good. Like the final product with everything compiled together looked really nice. Well guys, that brings us to the end of this behind the scenes series of Awaken. And uh, I just wanna thank you guys for tuning in, all, every single one of you for tuning in. 
to this series and to just the short film in general. Uh, and I love all the feedback I've gotten, uh, whether it's negative or positive. Uh, I love it all and I cherish it. And I really can't thank you guys enough for supporting me and uh, Dylan and everyone else who was involved in making this short film. Uh, gotta give a special thanks once again to Dylan Listener, Jacob Goldfarb, Brandon Dale, and Ryan Long himself. These, every single one of these guys uh, deserve so much love and tender and care um, for what they were able to help us achieve. It feels so good to finally put it into this nearly two year long journey. I can't believe it's been that long uh, since I set out to make this short film when I first announced it. And I'm very excited for the future, very excited for the upcoming projects I have in line, and um, which I will be sharing with you very soon. And it's helped me realign myself with my passion for filmmaking. And I really can't thank you guys enough once again. But anyway guys, I'm done gushing. Thanks so much once again for watching the series. And make sure to head over to all my social media and thunderboltfilms.club. Thanks guys, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.